Um, I thought I'd do a little video about British, English, London cultural differences. Because I know a lot of my people who watch this channel are, are from America. And uh, I, personally, I find this stuff very interesting. I, I don't know. I like I I obviously cultural differences in in countries are interesting. I say they're interesting to pretty much everyone considering how many views sort of, you know, you ever see those videos that are like um like 10 hand signals that you will offend people if you do in Japan and they have like 20 million views or something. Like clearly this stuff's interesting to people, but specifically with English speaking countries, like I can I can actually understand the language but also they all came from here so it's it's like a, a different isolated way of being i don't know but like you even get it in different parts of the, the country it's it's not just a, a, a different english-speaking countries like america or australia type thing but like even if you go to like up north or in the countryside i mean i think this is probably co pretty common around the world in every country but like uh if you're in america the best way to compare it is that London is is pretty much like New York except sadder like uh maybe not sadder I don't really know I don't really know what everyone's like in New York but you and as I understand it the stereotype about New York is that everyone's just kind of busy and just there's all sorts of crazy shit going down and so everyone just sort of ignores everyone else and just is is, is it's just kind of rude London is very much like that like no one makes eye contact or nothing if you're out outside of London, outside of the city, like, uh, when I've been on a trip or something, and I'm, 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 I'm just walking down the street, and someone passes, and they say, hi, I'm like, what the fuck, <laughs> I don't know who you are, you can't just say hi to me, but that's, like, pretty common outside of the city, uh, I think that's probably pretty common in a, in a lot of countries, like, do a little nod of, even just, like, a nod of acknowledgement, when you pass someone, never happens. Because in London, you pass a million people just going to the shop. Like, you, you can't nod an acknowledgement for every single one. You'd be going crazy. Um, no one makes eye contact. No one does anything like that. Which suits me just fine. I don't like any of that stuff. Um, but I, I mean, I can appreciate the friendly atmosphere of the countryside. Uh, even if it's not really for me. Um... But uh, some interesting cultural differences. Uh, I like to talk about, you know, take this video as a guide. If you ever visit the UK, that's what I'm going to treat it as. Sort of a guide if you ever visit the UK. I'm going to mute this video because it's kind of hard for me to talk while I'm watching it. Uh, I'm just watching some footage of Death Stranding. Um, I've seen a lot of people hating on Death Stranding. And uh, although I don't really play video games and I don't own a console new enough to play this game. Um, this looks like exactly my shit. I've seen people complain that, like, you just spend the whole time managing your inventory and, and traversing terrain and you don't shoot anyone. How can I play a game that you don't shoot people in? Like, this looks like exactly my shit. Like, ridiculously in-depth mechanics, weirdly heady story. Like, that, that is my shit. Like, like, if someone, if, if this is my ideal game. Someone get, someone shows you this hill, and the challenge of the game is just get down this hill without falling. And that is what Death Stranding is. That seems like the perfect game for me. Uh, that's the, I bet if I played this game, I would it would become my favourite game instantly. Because, firstly, I love exploration in games anyway. I mean, one of my favourite games is Yume Nikki, which is all about exploration, uh, pretty much. And this game seems to have a heavy focus on that. And, you know, heady stories. You, you've you seen my taste in media. You know I like the weird esoteric shit. Uh, I don't know. This game looks really good. I've seen definitely... I've seen people hating on it. Like, like they've gone so far in realism that you can trip over rocks. It's like, no, you're stupid. I agree that, that realism in games isn't really important. But this is... This is... This is... This is Kojima we're talking about, okay? This is not... Uh, we just want to make everything as realistic as possible. This is a game design choice, okay? He's clearly said he's clearly trying to make a man versus environment story, you know, and like the the actual environment itself is the enemy rather than like your classic just shoot the people in the other color, 
or whatever. You know, he's he's trying to, which I think is fucking genius and very enjoyable. Like it, it's it's not about. Although I like the games like about twitch reflexes and stuff like that, it's not about just mowing down endless hordes. Even though that can be fun, I'm not criticizing that. You know, Doom, the original Doom, is one of my favorite games, which is basically just that. But this is more like I, from what I've seen of Death Stranding, it's mu- it's like a problem solving game. It's about here's this environment, here's this river or something, here's this hill. Um, your challenge is to get to the bottom without dropping everything. Um, you only have what you have in your inventory. Solve this problem. That seems very intellectually stimulating to me and fun. But anyway. That was a bit off topic. Uh, let me... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So take this as a guide for um, if you ever come to the UK. Uh, to London, specifically. But uh, I guess these things are applicable all across the UK. So the first thing I'll talk about is something that's, that's very near and dear to my heart. Alcohol. Uh, in America, there's this concept of the liquor store, Right? You want to buy some booze to drink with your mates. You go to the liquor store or whatever. In the in the UK, we don't have liquor stores. Uh, we have something called an off-license. Um, now, you'll hear some people use this as an example of, um, like, different terms. Like, you know how uh, you in America they call them elevators and in the UK they call them lifts. Like, sometimes you'll hear this brought up as an example of that. Like, in America, they call them little li- liquor stores. In the UK, they call them off-license. But in reality, they're describing two similar but different things. Because, as I understand it, an off a, 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 a liquor store specifically sells liquor. That's why it's called a liquor store. It specifically is a, 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 a shop that sells alcohol and probably cigarettes. I don't know, but I'm assuming they sell cigarettes. And they probably sell snacks as well. But um, I, I've never been in one. But that, from what I've seen in media, it's what it seems like. Right, they they just sell... They sp- mainly sell alcohol. Uh, whereas in the, the, uh, an off-license is basically just a... Um, I don't know if this is a word outside of the UK, but a corner shop, like a convenience store. Uh, it's, it's just a sh- uh, like a, your everyday shop sells like your basic canned foods and basic toiletries and stuff like that and they have a fridge with beer and wine and and you can get some uh spirits as well you see yeah because we don't have the word liquor in 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 britain we just use the word spirits to describe hard liquor uh and and those are kept behind the counter so if you want to buy that you'll have to you you go up to the 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 shopkeeper or if you want to be really london about it the boss man You'll hear, you'll hear, this is, this slang will probably be outdated in a couple of years, but that's like the slang for someone who owns, owns the business, the establishment that you're in is the boss man. So you, you, you might see, see more, more, um, <laughs> oh no, I'm not going to say that. Anyway, you might see, uh, you might see some people go in and say a hey, boss man, right? Which just means like the person working there. Uh, but you have to, if you want to buy, like, vodka or spirits, vodka or fucking gin or anything like that, you'll have to ask for it. But the, but wine and beer and the the weaker alcoholic beverages are just in a fridge or on a shelf. Um, and, yeah, it's called an off-license. Now, that, that name sounds kind of like... Like, I can imagine hearing that name and being like, off-license sounds kind of like a dodgy thing. Like, are these, like, illegal, illegal things that are, they're off-license, they don't have a license? That's not the case. Off-license, actually, and a lot of, even British people don't know what the word comes from, but it's, a. Uh, it actually comes from, um, it, the, the, the word off is describing the license, so... A bar or a pub would be an on license. It means that they have a license to serve alcohol on on premises, that the alcohol can be consumed on premises. Whereas an off license means they have an alcohol. They only can, the the alcohol can only be consumed off premises, basically. So it's it's a it's alcohol that you can drink off premises. That's what an off license is. Uh, but but they also sell like most of your, your, your you know whatever you want to buy. 
Um, so there's, there's something important, is the, the off license. Uh, or if you want to be very London about it, an offy. So that's where you buy your beer. Or, obviously, you could go to a pub. Now, I'm not a good person to ask about pubs. A lot of people say, if you want a true UK experience, you got to go to a pub. you got to go to a proper British pub. Now, in my opinion, pubs are overhyped. Um, but I, if you came over here from a different country, I would probably recommend going to a pub. Like, it is, it is a... I, I don't know. It depends how much money you have. Because the, the reason I don't go to pubs, and I've never been into pubs or clubs or bars or anything like that, is that I don't... that The, the alcohol is more expensive than it is just to buy it on its own, which is the case, as I understand it, all around the world. If you, if you buy a pint at a pub, it's going to cost you like three to five quid, whereas it's cheaper, like one one to two quid, maybe like a little more, an, an off-license. Um, Um, that's that's one reason, and also you know I just don't like people. I like they're too loud. There's too many people. The music's always shit. Like that's that's my opinion. But uh, a lot, I I mean a lot of people don't feel that way about about those things. Like like they think like what's a couple quid difference? It's not really that big a deal. And plus you get to hang out with your friends and, and people. The reason people go to pubs is for the atmosphere of the whole place, right? And if you don't like the atmosphere, like for me the atmosphere doesn't really appeal to me. So obviously I'm not gonna like it, but. That's why you'd go there. It's it's if you if you want to understand what a pub is like, pub stands for public house, uh, which is a pretty good descriptor. It's essentially a a, a um communal living room, like a. It's just a place to for, to like hang out, probably watch some football or soccer, uh, but football. Uh, yeah, um. So. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, maybe go to one. But um, if you don't, in- if you don't already enjoy going out for drinks, if you just enjoy drinking as an activity by itself, then probably don't go to a pub. But uh, if you come to London, here's what I would recommend you do: if you're a visitor, if you're a tourist, um, firstly, you don't really want to bother with any of the touristy spots. I've been to all the touristy spots in London. Uh, the only good ones are the art galleries. Like it, I would definitely hundred percent recommend the Tate Modern. Uh, the Tate Modern is is my favorite art gallery, maybe in the world. I've been to as a, I've been to the Louvre. For, well, I, I I halfway through saying that word, I was like, am I gonna say this anglicized or am I gonna say it in the French way? And I started anglicized and then turned to French halfway through. Uh, the, the Louvre. <laughs> I've been to the Louvre. I've been to MoMA. I've been to the Gutenberg Museum. Is that what it's called? The one that with cool architecture. I've been to um, I've been to a lot of them. I've been to other ones in London as well. I've been to pretty much every art gallery in London: National Portrait Gallery, National Gallery, Tate Britain. Um, I've been to that. I've been to even loads of art galleries outside of London, like. A lot of people don't realize this. There's actually three Tates. There's the Tate, the Tate Modern, which is the the one in. There's two in London: the Tate Modern and the Tate Britain. The Tate Modern is modern art. The Tate Britain is um, British art. And then there's actually the Taint, the Taint, not a Taint, the Tate, the Taint Saint Ives, which is in Saint Ives, which is a little, like a, I I guess like a fishing village. Like, it's a, it's a sort of seaside town. That's what it's called. It's a seaside town. Uh, it's a pretty nice place. And uh, they have some good art. For some reason, St. Ives is known for its, like, art and poetry. Uh, I don't really know why. There's probably some historical reason for it, but, um... Uh, but yeah, so there's a taint in, there's a taint in St. Ives, and that one's cool. But the best one is, in my opinion... Tate Modern, which is, I think, also the biggest. It's located in what used to be a, uh, it's fucking sick, okay? It's one of my favourite places in the world. It's one of my favourite places in London. It's amazing. I, I go there semi-regularly. So, it, it used to be a, um, 
power station, like a like a, a electricity generating station, right? And it's just off the River Thames, um, uh, and uh, it's a big building, and it just was convert. It was disused and converted to an art gallery, and like when you walk in, the first place you'll be in is called the Turbine Hall, right? And you can, it's so, like, a massive space. It's like a fucking, it's so, I don't even know how to explain how big it is. It's like seven stories high, maybe more. But it, there's, like, you can just see all the way to the top. It's so cool. It's a really cool space. And they often have, like, exhibitions in that space. And they just built a new wing recently, which has some cool things in it. Like, the architecture is, is really brutalist, and which is exactly my style. It looks sick. Like, loads of exposed concrete. It looks so cool. Um, and then, you know, they got, they got loads of good art. There's exhibitions you can pay for, but other than that, like, to actually get into it, it's free. And there's a lot of, like, the stuff that's always there, like, the stuff that they own is is uh, free, pretty much. Like, it's all free to get into. But um, if you want to go see a specific exhibition sometimes you have to pay for it not always but often you have to pay for it uh but it's just a great building it's just a great like space to be in it's it's really fun and they have they always have interesting shit going on there like last time i went there there was an art ex- there's like an exhibit that was a room that had some sort of like i guess it had tear gas in it that you'd go in and it would just make you cry like it was like a room that would force you to cry basically you it, it was right off the turbine or You'd, you'd just go in there and then it, they had some gas in there that would just, like, sting your eyes until you cried. It was fucked up. I was so stoned at the time. It was crazy. <laughs> uh, but it was really fun. Like, these always interesting stuff there. There was also, that time, there was a... I don't know it's Guillermo del Toro. Uh, there was also a, a, an exhibition called No Ghost, Just Shell, which was like a... a mar- it, it was like a... I, it was almost I was almost like an artistic analyzing of Hatsune Miku like it was about basically a virtual idol that they paid like the artist paid for this I don't even know what it was it was it's confusing but it was really cool it looked like an anime and I like anime and it had a ghost in like the name of the exhibition was a ghost in a shell reference I mean you can't go wrong there mate but yeah they don't just have paintings like they have all sorts of multimedia shit but they also have a lot of paintings uh Hold on, this beer isn't open. Uh, so I, if you, if I would definitely recommend that art gallery of all the places in London to visit. That's a great place. Um, what did I just? I I put everything in the wrong place there. That one goes. The cat goes in the bin. This goes up there, and the bear goes here. Okay. Uh. Places not to go, you don't, there's not really any point in going to the London Eye. If you go to the Tate, you can go to the top floor of the Tate, and they have like a bar there, and uh, it's like a ba- and a balcony that you can go out on and look over the city from there for free. So there's not really any reason to go to, the, to go on the London Eye. Uh, if you don't know, I'm sure, I don't know how, if the London Eye is a, I think it's a landmark, right? But it's, it's like a big Ferris wheel, basically, and it's owned by like, I think it's owned by like Coca Cola or some bullshit like that. It's 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 bad. It's overpriced and it's boring. You don't. There's no point in doing it. Uh, there's loads of places you can go to for free and get a good view of the of of London. For example, um, uh, this is gonna lead into my next point. Uh, actually, well, I've carefully crafted this to lead into everything. If you happen to be a weeb. Uh, and you happen to like the anime k and you happen to have seen the k movie, well, uh, every location in the k movie is a real place in London. They didn't just draw things that kind of look like London. They actually, they filmed the, the Kyoani, like a staff went to London, took a bunch of pictures, and then recreated it. So every place from, from the k movie is a place you can visit in London. Some of them have changed a bit since the movie was made, like, Camden specifically changed to quite a bit. But not that much. Like, it's still recognisable, but some of the shops have, like, changed to what they look like. But uh, you can, like, you can go to... And also, some of the stuff isn't where they make it seem like it is. For example... So, in the movie, they go to Camden Town. 
they walk along Camden Town for a bit, and then they go into this, like, Japanese restaurant. Uh, in reality, those are real places, but the Japanese restaurant that they go to is actually, like, a five-minute walk away from Camden Town. It's actually still in Camden, but it's, like, a... It's a little, it's a little further away than they make it seem, and it's also, in real life, it's a, it's a club. It's a club called Pride, uh, which I once, um... That's a that's I that's not I never been in there basically, but one time someone told me like, hey, I'll put you on the guest list if you want to come here later, and I was like, oh sick, here's my name, and I gave a fake name, and then they were like sick, and I went there later, and I wasn't on the guest list, so that pissed me off. Uh, I had like a promoter came up to me, and start, we started talking, and he was like, yeah, I'll put you on the list, so they'll let you in, and they didn't let me in, which was uh, so I'm never going there. But uh, yeah, either way, it's a little farther away. But and it's definitely not a Japanese restaurant. Um, but but yeah, the, I would def I would recommend going to Camden. However, the main street Camden, I think it's called Camden High Street. Um, but the main Camden Street is is pretty much a tourist trap. It used to be like this the home of punk, like the home of punk music and rock music in in the world. Uh, but it kind of became shit. It become it's basically a tourist trap. Like all there is is touristy shops that sell like really overpriced fake supreme clothes and shit like that. Uh, the market is like it's all bad. You don't really want to go there. There's one shop that's decent that actually sells like punk and metal clothing for a good like a semi decent price. And there's there is some good stuff around there, but but it's not on the high street. There's a there's a there's a place called All Ages Records, which is an, a punk and metal record shop. Uh, but it's like a it's like a good five ten minute walk away, and I, I but if you do happen to be in Camden, you should probably check that out because it's pretty cool. You can buy patches there as well to stick on your clothes and and uh, what are they call badges pins. They it's a cool place, definitely a cool place. And the guy that runs it is a nice guy. Um, uh, but but anyway, the reason I recommend going to Camden, not just for the K on movie because you can go to where they were. But also, even if you're not into Kaon, uh, Camden is a great place for two other reasons. Firstly, um, oh fuck, I had I was gonna say something and I've f- fucking forgotten what it was. Uh, I had a whole thing planned out and I've forgotten it. There is there's a cool there's a lot of cool stuff in Camden. If you go past the main high street and go into the stables which is like an off-the-street bit. There used to be horse stables and is now a bunch of shops. Most of those are also touristy, but there's some good Chinese food in there. Lots of, like, food, lots of T-shirts and stuff. But there's also a shop in there called Cyberdog, which is a pretty fun place to go, even though the clothes are overpriced and bad. So don't buy anything, but it's a cool shop to just be in. Like, it's a cool environment. Um, It has, like, escalators down to a basement, and then they play, like, loud house music. Uh, and everything's neon, it's kind of cool, uh, I used to go in there with my friend, and, uh, we used to go in there high, and, and then, like, just, just try on a bunch of clothes and not buy anything, like, we just, we just find that we just go in there, like, pick the most ridiculous outfits we could, try them on, and then, um, talk to the staff for a bit, and then just leave, (laughs) that was, yeah, that was a good time, but, um, the reason I mostly recommend going to Camden brings me on to my next point, which is that London actually has a really intricate canal network, which no one really talks about, but I've been very interested in kind of recently. So that the, the everyone knows that London Underground is is a uh, like the the oldest underground train network in the world. I don't know if everyone knows that, but I I assume everyone knows that, right? The Metropolitan Line, the London Metropolitan Line, is the oldest underground train network in the world, and the, the same tunnels from the Victorian era are still in use by a guy called fucking, um, I've forgotten his name. Uh, how have I forgotten his name? He's, like, a very important... I don't think he's that well-known, uh, but, uh, he's, like, a very important British engineer. He also did, like, a lot... He did, like, the, uh... Brunel, I think is his name. Something Brunel. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure, but he did, he was in charge of it, uh, but, but the, before the London Underground, the way they would get goods and shit around, not just on the Thames, but also with, um, using canals, there's a pretty cool, like, well, well, like a nice canal system in London, uh, and those canals happen to run straight through Camden, 
So if you go to Camden, you'll see a canal there, and it's very pretty, and you can walk down there, just have a nice stroll down the canals. It's a really nice place to be. It's a cool atmosphere. There's always, like, people uh, hanging out around the canals as well, like, uh, drinking, smoking, you know, that sort of stuff. So you'll meet cool people there. Uh, but it's mostly just a really nice view, and you can just get lost and just wander around for ages. And uh, you always end up in a good place because they they only connect... The, obviously, canals are expensive to build, so they only connect the um, the the like important parts of London. So if you walk down a canal in a random direction, as long as you don't walk down the one in the one direction that heads out of London, um, but uh, you'll probably be fine. From Camden, you'd have to walk a really long way to get out of London. So um, you'll be fine. But um, if you yeah, uh, go down those canals. Even if you're not in Camden, uh, there's a lot of great canals there. Oh, this is what I wanted to mention. I remember now. So the canal system is a must, a must see. I would say, uh, if you're not don't want to go from Camden there, then um, I would recommend that there's a place called Little Venice, uh, which is like a, where a bunch of the canals sort of meet up, and that's a that's a really beautiful spot with a lot of nice, nice things to look at, <coughs> and a, a pleasant walk to have. Sorry, I just. <coughs> <laughs> drink went down the wrong the wrong way but anyway here's the reason i mentioned camden in the first place was because i was talking about the london eye and views and shit like like the shard and the london eye there's all these places that will charge you to have a good view and uh here's what you really need to do if you want to get a good view of london is uh right near camden ignore most of camden and head towards a place called primrose hill uh, it is literally just a big hill, you know, like it's a park that has a big hill in it, and if you go to the top of that hill, you get a great view of the sea, uh, and there's, it's actually, it's often quite busy, like there's also, there's often a lot of people up there, especially tourists, because I, I guess it's, it's in a lot of guidebooks, but it is a nice, like it is a really nice place to hang out, um, and, uh, yeah, if you go on that, at night, you can see the whole city skyline, even down to Canary Wharf with all the... It looks very Blade Runner-esque. You see a lot of lights and shit. It's cool. So I, I would recommend that place if you if you want to check out the city skyline and hang out. Uh, another place I would really recommend in London is uh, the Barbican. Uh, the Barbican... So there was basically a big section in central London, uh, in the city of London... So, okay, this is going to take some explaining. So, London is actually not one city. London is actually two cities. One city inside another city. Uh, there's London, and then there's the city of London. Uh, they're, two, they're two separate cities with separate, like, mayors and separate governance. Separate police force, even. There's the Metropolitan Police and the City of London Police. They're two separate police force. They have separate councils, separate... Um, garbage collectors, all that shit. Um, the city of London, also known locally, colloquially, as the Square Mile, is a square mile, uh, roughly, in the centre of London. Um, and they have a bunch of really old... Like, they have medieval... They still, they still have guilds. Like, they have... Like, guilds are a very important part of the local government there. And they have a lot of, like, um really weird traditions. And um, if you happen to be into, like conspiracy theory type shit then you definitely know about the city of london because they have a lot of connections with with a lot of illuminati type type shit uh and the, since that's where all the banks are in london all the businesses and banks because they have a lot of um the the city of london is is essentially ruled by the corporations like there's a mayor of the city like a city mayor right uh and the his voted for by corporate by the like uh, corporations instead of people um they the essentially yeah it's a place for for corporations to be but in world war Two, like a big chunk of the city of london was bombed to shit like it unreconstructable and for a while it just sat there and then in the 60s or maybe late 50s i don't remember there are these two architects who uh they they basically just said um just fucking go wild and so they built this place called the Barbican, which is like a massive complex of like housing, uh, brute like brutalist architecture of like housing. It was supposed to be um, 
collective housing for the middle classes so so uh, and the idea of like like a, a collective like a i don't know what the word would be like a tower block kind of thing but 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 not just for for the pause for the a place where where the middle classes could could do that and um and then and also it has this great a, a big art center um called barbican center where there are a lot of bands and they even have a they have a, a whole like orchestra thing what's it called concert like a, a concert hall for an orchestra in there as well uh a lot of great bands play there. They often like they're very. It's all about artsy stuff. Like Sun Sun O oh, Bracket Brackets played there once. Uh, like a lot of artsy shit like that plays, plays in in the Barbican. But even if you don't, even if you don't go there specifically for a gig, the environment of the Barbican is is just great. It's it's probably one of my favorite. I don't know if it's called it a building or like a building complex, but like just wandering around, it's it's amazing. Uh. Have you seen the Odyssey, the video of the Odyssey? Um, there's a bit where I'm just in in one of my videos, the Odyssey. The, if there's a bit where I'm sitting on like a wall with my friend, that's at the Barbican. Uh, hold on, let me let me get it up so I can show you. Uh, no, no, I'll just search it here. It's not like I care about this. Uh, Roy. Knaton. There we go. Uh, where is it? Give me, give me the ship, mate. Apologies. Technical difficulties. Uh, somewhere. There it is. Here. This is what the Barbican looks like. It's like a a big complex of like like you can see back here. It keeps going for a long time. You can wander here for hours and hours and keep finding new shit. Um, they got all these fountains. Like that's the bar. This uh, this building here is the bar. Like where the arts stuff is. This is a cafe. Uh, um, yeah. This is just an outdoor area. Like this is all. The thing about the Barbican is it's kind of hard to get into. Like they, it's purposely made so the the entrances aren't clear from the outside. Like you might, even though there's a tube station called Barbican, uh, and it's right there, it was purposely designed to feel like a sep like separate from the rest of the city. Um, so that like the entrance is actually, like they're not like a big wide entrance saying here you're in the Barbican. Like the whole thing is kind of elevated, like it's kind of lifted above the floor, and. Uh, you have to go to, like, a little staircase, basically, to get up. Like, there's a bunch of little staircases dotted around the place, and that's how you get into it. You should be able to find them. They're not that difficult, but, like, it's not super obvious how to get in. Uh, yeah, that's... the Like, back here, there's, like, a fence. You can't see it really here. Maybe if you look really carefully, you can see that it kind of drops down here. There's, like, a wall. Like, this section back here is, like, private housing, you can't, that's, you You have to be a resident to get in there, but the entire rest of the place is, is open to the public, um, and you can see it, it looks really cool, like, hold on, like, there's all sorts of interesting architecture, like this thing on the struts, with all these, it looks sick, it's one of my favourite places in London, if not the world, um, yeah, all these cool people just, just chilling, uh, it's got a nice vibe to it, even in winter, it's got a nice vibe to it. Uh, you see that you got these big, like, this is a part of the Barbican still. You got these random, like, art things, sculptures, big tower blocks. Um, like, it's all part of the same thing. I would definitely recommend going to the Barbican. It's a great place to, to hang out. And just wander around and get lost for a while. Um, there's also a... Uh, Although I I keep fucking missing it, there's like a um, like a big greenhouse basically, like a tropical garden in a greenhouse in the Barbican, which is it's only open to the public at certain on certain days at certain times. But if you if you can get there, it's great. Like it's a really fun place to wander around. Um, so yeah, that's a place I would definitely recommend visiting. Uh, it's it's great. I like the Barbican a lot. Um, other than that, um, 
if you come into London, what do you, what do you want to see? A food. Food is probably an important thing. Fish and chips is like the standard British thing, right? Okay, firstly, okay, I, I should have mentioned this first. If you really want to get an idea of what the UK is like, not just like the UK. You know, you yeah, fish and chips is the stereotypical British fucking meal. Fuck that. Okay, fish and chips is fine, but no one actually eats fish and chips on the regular. No one does that. Um, maybe if you live on the seaside, then you do. But no one in the city actually eats fish and chips on the regular. What they eat is fucking Greg's, okay? You need to go to Greg's if you want to get an idea of what the UK is like. Go to a fucking Greg's and get a fucking sausage roll, okay? Okay, this is, if there's one thing you should take away from this video, to 100% do if you ever come to the UK, not just London, but this is the entire UK, including Scotland, uh, I don't know if they have it in Ireland, but they definitely have it in Scotland, I don't know if they have it in Wales, they probably have it in Wales, um, go to fucking Greg's and get a sausage roll, okay, it's important, that, Greg's is something you cannot understand, possibly, if I was to describe Greg's to you right now, I, I wouldn't be able to do it justice. Greg's is, is something that you just... It's, a, it's an I once described it as an egregore. Like, it's a... It's something that is that it speaks for itself. It's a, the type of food... It's like pastries, right? It's like a savoury pastries place. But um, you got to go to Greg's, mate. you just got to go to Greg's. And it's cheap as well. A sausage roll is like one pound. What I normally get, maybe it's sacrilege saying I get anything other than a sausage roll, but uh, I actually, this, the Greg's sausage rolls are good, but uh, personally, they're normally what I get at Greg's is a chicken bake, even though they go everywhere, um, like, like they're, they're full of like a creamy sauce type of thing, um, and chicken, of course, but they're also full of like a creamy sauce, and when you bite into it, the creamy sauce kind of goes everywhere, it's a little impractical. But it is also it, my favorite item on the Greg's menu. However, if you're going to Greg's for the first time, you gotta get a sausage roll. That's the iconic Greg's, the iconic Greg's Greg's food item, is a, is a Greg's sausage roll. And hey, they even now have a vegan sausage roll, uh, which is a ridiculous thing. But apparently, it's the best vegan sausage roll around. So uh, even if you're vegan. Or just trying to be healthy. Go to Greg's. And get a sausage roll. Because they're good shit. Uh, you, you, if you don't know what a sausage roll is. It's literally a sausage rolled in pastry. Like it's just a. a, a, a it's just like you, get, you have a sausage in the center. Not a little fucking. A big fuck off sausage. Uh, and then it's wrapped in pastry basically. Uh, which doesn't sound like it would be that good. But it is actually, I don't know what it is about their pastry and their sausages. Something about it, it just, it has a certain, a certain je ne sais quoi to it. <laughs> it has a certain je ne sais quoi, which just makes it incredible. Uh, and a key part of what it means to be British. Uh, other things you should do. Let me think. Um... Uh, it kind of, it depends on your interests, you know, if if we're assuming that uh, people who watch this channel are kind of like, I don't, I don't really know, um, I'm trying to imagine like, let's say I, I, someone came to the UK and met up with me, where would I take them? Well, I'd definitely do all the stuff I already talked about, go to the Barbican, go to the South Bank. Uh, th which is literally the south, the south bank of the River Thames, just all along, which is where the the um the Tate Modern is actually located. But all along the south bank is like lots of cool stuff, like um, uh, like a uh, how do I explain it? Like um, there's like concert halls and like uh, uh there's a skate park there which was almost demolished recently, and then the, there was a big effort to make sure it didn't, like, it, to save it, uh, but it still might get demolished at some point, but there's a cool skate park there that is pretty popular, uh, there's, um, there's a lot of stuff there, there's, like, a lot of cool restaurants, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, what the fuck is happening, 
see that what just happened that's like i can imagine you if you're playing death stranding and you're a normie you'd be like this is terrible but to me it's like clearly the game didn't just decide to do that that is the result of a bunch of choices that he's made He's, he's decided to carry this much stuff in this particular way and go this particular route. And if he hadn't done that, then he wouldn't have fallen over. And even if he did fall over, all that happened is his stuff fell off and he had to pick it back up again. Like, that's... Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> back to London. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that's pretty much all I recommend doing. Uh, that should give you enough to do for a small trip, right? Yeah, you see, like, that? Obviously, that was gonna happen. If you jump off a fucking rock, you're gonna fucking drop all your shit, okay? You're an idiot. Um, I was gonna say something. I had an idea, but then I immediately forgot it. Um, oh, yeah! How did I forget about this? Uh, the Natural History Museum and the Science Museum. There's a street in London called Museum Street, uh, and there's a bunch of museums on it, and they're all fucking sick. The Natural History Museum, which is a... It's got dinosaurs and shit. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, that one's pretty cool. M- partly for what's actually in the museum, and partly just because the arch like it's a it's a really old and really big museum, and the architecture is really cool. Like it was built specifically to be a natural history museum. So if you look carefully around the architecture of the place, like um, for example, the decorations on the columns will have like certain animals in them, uh, like certain. It's sick. It's it's a sick place to be. Uh, the Science Museum, which is right next door, is also really cool. Uh, and really, they're both really big. Uh, there's also the British Museum, which is not on Museum Street. Uh, it's kind of far away from there. But uh, that's a cool place as well. Uh, it's... I don't know. I have very mixed feelings about the British Museum. The British Museum has been catching a lot of flack recently because... Um, essentially what most of the british museum is is just like um like it started as it's 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 a very old museum and uh it was essentially a place for like so rich british people would go to like egypt and just steal shit and then put it in their museum like sarcophaguses and stuff and like as time has gone by it's been catching a lot of flack these days for being like Okay, what you've done is you've come to my country, you've stolen something, and then you've put it in a museum <laughs> to be gawked at. Which I can understand why someone would be annoyed with that. Um, if that was a part of your culture. Uh, but mostly I don't like it because it's just kind of boring. Like, like the in, and then that's not true. There are some really interesting parts of the British Museum, but they don't tell you about them. Because they, like, if everyone knew about them, then they wouldn't be that interesting. Uh, but, so, like, there's some cool art in there, but they don't really publicize it that much. They mostly publicize the popular shit, like, like, Egyptian sarcophaguses and, and stuff like that. Uh, which is fine. Maybe if you, if, you're, if you know a lot about that, maybe it's interesting. But, um, I don't really know anything about that stuff, so it's not particularly interesting to me. However, there is, as I've recently found out, but I've never actually tried it. Apparently, there's a bit in the British Museum that is like all all papers and like, um, like basically paper records and shit. Not not just like, like um, things to look at, but like it's like a, it's almost like a library. Like you go in there and they have all these like, um, basically bits of paper and stuff like that and books. Uh, but it's all like uh letters like stuff of historical significance like sketches from famous artists and and like uh, letters sent by famous people with history and, and all that sort of stuff and apparently anyone from the public can just go in there and, and view this stuff uh and it's like public publicly available uh i don't really know how that works but maybe you could look into that um there's also the british library which is a similar thing it's a it's a it's a very big public resource that 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 has a lot of interesting shit in it. I have um, I've only been to the British Library once. Um, it's a bit overwhelming for me. It's the sort of place you really 
unless you're the sort of person that just hangs out in libraries for fun, which I'm sure there are people like that who watch this channel, I'm not one of those people, but, uh, like, I appreciate them, <laughs> I appreciate those people, but it's mostly for, like, let's say you have a research project and you need this one specific thing, chances are they 100% have it, and they also have everything pertaining to that thing, like, but I don't know if I'd recommend it necessarily as a tourist. As for food, you know, a lot of people... I said Greg's, but you've got to eat things other than Greg's. The thing is, unlike every other place in the world, no one likes British food. The British don't like British food, and foreigners don't like British food. We don't have Brit. There is really no British food, uh, except Greg's. So, so if you come here, you're going to be... It doesn't really matter what you eat. Because it's ne it's not going to be, like, a taste of the local culture. It's going to be, like, fucking Italian food or something. It's not going to be British food. Uh, no one eats British food. Except, you know... So, so if you do come here... Um, I, other than Greg's, there's Nando's. It's another cultural staple. Uh, people know about it because of the cheeky Nando's meme. But, uh... Nando's is, is, in my opinion, pretty overrated, but it's also, like, it's pretty fine, like, it's fine, I don't know, maybe you should just go there if you're just interested in, in what the, what a Nando's is, uh, by the way, I think they also have Nando's in Australia, uh, but, uh, apparently the Nando's in Australia isn't very good compared to the Nando's in Britain, I don't know really why that would be, I don't know if I believe that, but, um, the Nando's in Britain, I've never been super into, I've been, I've been, obviously I've been many times, but I'm, I've never been incredibly into it. Uh, but yeah, maybe you, maybe you'd like it. It's, it's all chicken. If you like chicken, uh, then Nando's is good. But, but I would probably recommend if you want chicken to go to a chicken shop in London, there's chicken shops everywhere. They're like a, they'll be called things like PFC, perfect fried chicken. Uh, and those are like cheap. If you go to one and you want to seem like a local, you gotta ask for three wings and chips. Don't bother looking at the menu. Don't bother with any of that shit. Go up to the counter and say, hey, can I have three wings and chips, please? Okay? That's all you need to do. There you go. I wish someone had told me that, because I didn't go to a chicken shop until later in life, and I didn't know what I was doing. And also, chicken shops, they're not a chain. Then There's not a chain of chicken shops. There's, like, 20 chains, and they all... But they're all franchises. Like, every single... Um, every, every single, like chicken shop you go to, even if it's the same, got the same name as a, another one, like, they taste completely different, uh, so it's, it's sort of just luck, whether you get a good one or not, um, but yeah, just ask for three wings and chips, or if, some places do three wings and chips, some places do four wings and chips, you really can never tell, you don't know, so I always ask for three, or four, I don't know, J just either, just ask for that, um, that's a pretty important cultural thing, and they're pretty nice, uh, sometimes, except when they're not, uh, and other than that, uh, maybe you should go for some Indian food, because we have, we have, like, uh, that's probably the closest to British cuisine that we have, is that we have, like, an anglicized English, we have, like, an anglicized, um, Indian cuisine thing, like, like, Indian food in the UK is not the same as Indian food in India, but it's, um, its own thing, uh, so maybe go for that, but other than that, there's not really any, like, um, British food staples that I can really think of off the top of my head, other than what I've just mentioned, uh, but yeah, go, going for a nice curry is, is never gonna be bad, uh, and London has a lot of great food, just none of it's, culturally English, it's all Italian and French and Japanese and Korean, any, any food you like exists in London, we even have Five Guys now, okay, Five Guys is delicious, uh, um, I think that's probably the end of my guide, my cultural guide to London, from London, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything I would recommend, uh, you might have heard of the the phrase Timpan Alley, like, uh, Timpan Alley sh shops, or, or not Timpan Alley, like, Timpan Alley sh uh, tunes, like, songs. Well, Timpan Alley is actually just a real alley that exists in London that you can go to. 
uh, a lot of places that you'll hear like you hear like old songs and stuff are literally just streets that exist in London like um uh, 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 uh Mulberry Lane for example like have you seen the muffin man the muffin man the muffin man have you seen the muffin man who lives on no it's not Mulberry it's Drury Lane right who lives on Drury Lane yeah Drury Lane is a, a lane it's a street in London um yeah, but there is one thing that I want to mention actually before I finish, which is very important. I think this is something that you should definitely. This is a little locals only tip that you won't find in the guidebooks. There we go. Um, and that that is, uh, if if you come to London, you gotta go to Brick Lane. That what you will find in the guidebooks. You gotta go to Brick Lane, but specifically the Bagel Bake on Brick Lane. The Bagel Bake on Brick Lane is a they just sell they sell bagels or bagels or whatever you want to call them um and it's just good shit get anything on there specifically the salt beef bagel is probably the best one salt beef bagel from the bagel bake on brick lane it costs three pound fifty or something like that um get it with lots of mustard and pickles if you want them uh and go there and get it and it's good shit other than that, Shoreditch and Hoxton and and that area is generally a lost cause. Um, it's been very, very gentrified. The only other decent thing there is Rough Trade, which is a record shop on Brick Lane. And uh, that's about it. Uh, also, if you go to the end of Brick Lane, uh, and then... So, so at the, at the, if you go from Shoreditch, uh, which is probably where most people will come from, and you can head down Brick Lane... The bagel bakes right at the beginning, and then you go down, 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 and then for like about halfway down is, um, there's like a side street where there's the record shop, and then past that it suddenly transforms into like a, um, a lot of Indian food basically, a lot of Indian restaurants, and there'll be there'll be like people standing outside being like, hey, come to our restaurant, it's it's a bit crazy. Like, they'll, they'll literally try and goad you into going to their restaurant. Uh, which I guess isn't that crazy, but it's it's a little weird, because I've never seen that happen anywhere else in London. That they'll, they'll try and convince you to come inside. Hey, man, you hungry? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, we got a great deal, we got a great deal. We can, oh, you you want something to drink? We, we, we got two beers for, we got two beers for three pounds or something. You know, like, they'll, they'll really try and get you in. Uh, but uh, I don't know if any of those places are good, because I've never been in them. Uh, but maybe they are, I don't know. But anyway, you keep going down to the end of the street, and then turn right, I guess. Turn right, go past KFC. Maybe it's actually before KFC. Either way, somewhere around there is the Anarchist Bookshop, which is what it sounds like. It's a it's a bookshop that that specializes in anarchist and leftist literature, uh, which is a, that's a pretty cool place. And I, I I yeah, you should check that place out. That it's kind of hard to find because it's in a bit of like an a side street, um, but, uh, yeah, look that place up if you're, if you're there, because that's a, that's a cool place to go check out, they have a lot of, of literature, pretty much anything you could want, um, even if you're not an anarchist or a leftist, it's cool to just see little bookshops like that that exist, uh, yeah, is there anything else? Key to London, go go to the Bagel Bake, go go to Barbican, you go go to the Tate Modern, Primrose Hill, Canals, South Bank, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, like all the other touristy places are not really worth it. And when you're in London, you'll end up taking the tube anyway, so that's why I didn't mention it. But the tube is a great, like it's a, it's a, I actually kind of dislike physically riding the tube, but I really like tube stations. Like, I'm very into that. I'm very into them. My favourite tube station is Westminster Station, in case you're interested, uh, which is pretty fucking sick. And also Canary Wharf Station is pretty cool. Uh, Canary Wharf Station, they actually filmed some of Star Wars in. I think it was The Last Jedi. They filmed a little scene in Canary Wharf. It's substituted for part of the Death Star. And I was like, what the fuck? Not the Death Star, like a Star Destroyer or something. I don't remember. I don't really like Star Wars. Um, 
but I was watching it and I was like, what the fuck is that canary wharf? And turns out, yeah, they just put some like very basic, like they covered up the tube signs and shit. And then they just filmed that because it looks like a spaceship. It's sick. Uh, and then you'll be in Canary Wharf where there is basically nothing to do because it's just a banking, it's just where all the banks are, big, the big banks. It looks very cyberpunk, but that like there's, there's literally no shops and there's nothing. You just, you wander around. It's cool. Like it looks cool, but there's, there's no, there's nothing to do. Uh, so I don't really know if I can recommend it. Uh, but yeah, there you go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there because this has been, I've been rambling on for a long time. Death Stranding looks cool. The story looks interesting. I heard you have to play for forty hours to finish the story, which is exactly my shit. I want to get what I fucking pay for with a game, and if it takes, if I pay, if I'm, I'm spending money on a game, yeah, I better be able to play for fucking forty hours. Anyway, that's it. <laughs>